Okay, so let's take a look at this question going through one of the required practicals for waves. So it says figure two shows students measuring the speed of sound in air. And it says one student bangs the two bricks together, the sound wave is produced from the wall and travels back to the students. Describe how they can determine the speed of sound. So here we're talking through the method to be able to calculate the speed of sound from this experiment. So again, we need to think about what we're doing and how we're measuring it. Yeah, so apparatus and the method. Those are the bits we're going to need. So the first thing we're going to put here is that we need to know what each student is going to do and we need to find the speed. So we need to think about the equation and what bits we're going to use for it. So firstly, student one is going to be bringing the bricks, the woman there with the two bricks. We need to know the distance between her and the wall. Okay, so the first step is going to be measure the distance between the student holding the bricks and the wall. Now we've talked about what we're measuring, but we need to talk about how we're going to measure it. So you can use one of two things. You can either use what's called a trundle wheel that moves along like a wheel on the ground, or you can use a tape measure. So I'm gonna say measure the distance using a tape measure. Cool, two marks already so far. Now we need to look at measuring the time. That's why he's holding a stopwatch, you can see in the diagram. So we're gonna measure the time from when the student bangs the bricks to then the second student hearing the echo of that. So I'm gonna put here, use the stopwatch to measure the time between the student banging the bricks and hearing the echo. Cool, so we know how we're gonna measure the time, but this is the point where we can get some human error involved. They may not start the stopwatch at the correct time, they may miss the echo. There could be issues in this experiment. So it's important to mention here that we're gonna to have to repeat the experiment and for two reasons. One is to calculate an average, and also number two is to avoid any anomalies. So I'm gonna mention both of those here. So I'll say repeat the experiment to remove anomalies and calculate an average time. Now we want to calculate speed. So we know that speed equals distance over time. However, one thing we need to be careful of here is because it's the echo that we're waiting for. So the distance the sound would have traveled is the distance we measured to the wall, but then also for it to come back. So we need to make sure we double the distance. Okay, so I'm gonna say, firstly, double the distance and use the equation speed equals distance over time or V equals S over T. And all of that together, We've mentioned five points, almost six, but it's more than enough to get you your full marks.